cherchons la liberté. Oh non, oh non, oh non. My name is Nathan Kedera Hamer. That theater help children grow in knowing their rights and responsibilities. And I also like the way we do things, the way we practice. And I also like the way we perform our play as well. And I think that it will be good next time, better than this time. to go to school and learn and we have the right to obey our parents whatever they tell us to do and I learned to play the recorder Jasmine Blanks, founder and executive director of B4 Youth Theater, burning barriers, building bridges with children in Liberia, West Africa. We began in 2010 with an orphanage in Mount Barclay, Liberia, where we trained children to use the arts as a tool to reach their communities on issues of importance to them, such as access to clean water, quality education, sanitation, violence in their communities. Since then, more than 120 children have been reached through this innovative curriculum model that infuses the arts while teaching basic skills in math and literacy for community change. The children have written three original plays and have reached audiences in a local level with their communities as well as on a national level throughout Liberia, being broadcast onto local Liberian television stations and on the national news radio networks. President Ellen Johnson Searley, this year's Nobel Peace Prize winner, has been a supporter of this program since its inception and has really said that this program has made a difference in the lives of the youth that we've been able to touch. We hope to expand the program this year by reaching 300 Liberian youth. Our plan is to take three college-age interns to help train 20 Liberian young adults in our program model 
and then those 20 young, Liberian young adults will implement the program in their various home communities. This is a goal that we have had since the beginning to make the program sustainable in Liberia for the people of Liberia and we are well on our way to reaching that goal. We hope you can help us by partnering or by making a okay, donation. I'm here with my girl Jasmine Blanks and I'm your host Jasmine Farnham of the WOCP TV. And Jasmine, you know, you're 27 years old. You got started. Tell us how you got started with this B4 Youth Theater Project over in Liberia. Well, I was actually in Minnesota, which is not the place that most people expect to hear about when you start talking about Liberia. But I was studying for my master's in public policy and learning and writing about the public influence on education and youth with a lot of needs um, who maybe have gone through some trying circumstances who would be considered high risk in our community and in most communities. And the president of Liberia, Ellen Johnson Searleaf, came over to give a lecture and talked about the education drive for Liberia that just sparked something inside of me to do something over there to help. It was one of those moments that I was just like, yes, that's where I need to be. And um, the first year that I wanted to go over there, I wasn't able to make it happen quickly enough in order to start the program, but we used that year to build capacity, to um, do research, learn more about what was needed over there. And in 2010, we were able to begin our pilot program at an orphanage with 40 children, 24 of those children wrote the actual play that was performed that first groundbreaking pilot year and performed for an audience of 300 people in less than eight weeks' time with the president of Liberia as one of the audience members. It was an amazing start to Okay, Jasmine, what are some of the major challenges that, that you face as a young 27-year-old woman going into a foreign country and are, are, there, are there any concerns, any fears, any apprehensions? Um, my parents, and my father in particular, has always had reservations about me going. Before I went the first time, he um, went online and asked everyone he knew, whoever knew anything about Africa, what they thought about it. And people have a lot of misconceptions about what's going on in Liberia. The war um, that they faced did last about 14 years, and it, it was horrendous. Um, lives, families, institutions were torn apart. But um, the war is over, and it has been about seven years now. I feel perfectly safe in Liberia. Um, this past summer when I was there, I left my laptop in the back of a taxi. Now, a taxi is not what we know as a taxi where, you know, you call them, they stop for just you. A taxi is more like our local city bus, so we'll stop and pick up people along the way. So you can imagine my um, dismay when I got out of the car and began walking to realize that I left my laptop that had all of my financial information in it, it had my passport and, um, in my laptop case, everything I needed to run the program and for myself personally. Um, and I fretted about it for about an hour and a half. I talked to all the police that were standing nearby and looked for the car and we looked for the car. I was about to give up when the taxi driver himself came back from running his route and when he saw me, he stopped, he got out of the car and handed me my bag. Wow. And I thought you might have been looking for Wow. Um, <laughs> I don't think that would even happen here <laughs> um, in most places. Um, but I have been nothing but blessed and fortunate in the things that I've been able to do there. I've had rich and rewarding experiences. The students that I work with, they are supportive, they are creative, they're energetic. Are they want to learn. They here from the in class United States and Maryland, correct? It's a blessing. What's the difference in our children's desire or zeal? For education here in their Liberia? That's something that I think about a lot. Um, and it gives me an opportunity to share across both cultures, which is rewarding in itself. My students in Maryland, when they come into my classroom and I get to know them and they get to know me and hear about what I've done in Africa, we talk about access to resources and how in my classroom here we have computers, we have electronic keyboards where they can learn how to play the piano, we have xylophones, we have recorders, we have a wealth of instructional tools and information to help them be their very best selves. And I talk to them and show them pictures of how the chalkboard I write on in Liberia is a chalkboard, not a whiteboard. And it's old and it has a crack in it and a hole in it that might be from a bullet. It looks like it was from a bullet probably during the war. Um, and they 
it, they, they're shocked by what they hear. I feel like we take education for granted here because it is our right and that it's important to remember that people all over the world don't necessarily have as much access to the things that we have here in the United States. And that even from school district to school district, there are differentiations. So we just really need to be appreciative for whatever we have, even if it isn't a lot. I've worked in districts where we haven't had whiteboards or where we haven't even had paper for the copy machines. But um, there are still people so who don't have me, the opportunity. To how are you merging or bridging the cultures between you know, the United States or American American Americanizations. <laughs> you know, they say you're Americanized now. Uh, do you find the children in Liberia have any interest in being Americanized or, you know, a need to know about our culture? How do you do that? Well, Liberia and the U.S. have a very unique history. Um, Liberia is one of the African nations that was never colonized. Um, what happened was after slavery ended in United States. Um, there was the whole Back to Africa movement. You think of Marcus Garvey and other names um, that were prevalent during that time period. And many freed slaves did go to West Africa. They went to Monrovia, Liberia, and they began a civilization that is very much like what they experienced here in the United States. Mm. So um, their constitution sounds like ours, their flag looks like ours, red, white, and blue, stripes, only has one star, um, different meanings, but um, a lot of the same shared, shared history, a shared history. So things that are American are not unfamiliar to the children that I teach over there, but what I do find is that things that are costume, which is offensive in a lot of ways. I mean, think about it, if we looked at the way we dressed and we went to another country and they asked why we were wearing a costume, which a lot of people wouldn't really appreciate that comment, but I use it as um, a means of sharing. So I talk to the students that I teach and to the people that I encounter about traditional attire and what it looks like and the pride that comes with having something that represents centuries of culture. And in Liberia, they wear clothes the way we wear them here. They also wear their traditional attire. So um, it's a mindset that does embrace what other cultures have to offer. And it's a blessing to be able to share what I've learned over there with people that I encounter here on a regular basis. Wow. This is awesome work. I want to truly thank you for being a part of WOCP TV. And it is truly an honor and a blessing to undergird you with your project there. People ask me all the time how they can help. And there are several ways. Our most immediate need is to help our three interns get over to Liberia. So sponsor an intern today. There's more information about that on our website where you can find out who our interns are, what their goals are for being active with the program, and what their financial obligation will be in order to make this a reality for them to help the youth in Liberia. Another way is to just give us any kind of a donation, which can be done through our PayPal account on our webpage, as well as um, getting more information on our Facebook page. And then um, lastly, not the least though, by any means, is to hold a shipment party. I know it might sound a little bit strange, but what we um, ask some, some, some smaller local organizations to do is to grab a bunch of your friends, um, purchase a shipment barrel from an international shipping company, and have your friends donate some of the items we need, musical instruments, school supplies, um, WOCP TV and I'm your host Jasmine Farnham. I'm sitting here with Mr. Mark Carr and he is a realtor, real estate broker I should say, right Mark? Yes. And how long have you been in real estate and give us the name of your organization, your um, business. It's called Chantur Real Estate, C-H-A-N 
T I O R, Chaitir. I've been in business now for uh, not too long, about three and a half years. Wow. I was a sales agent with um, a different company. I don't want to say the name right now. Okay, I understand. Don't give them uh, any competition. Don't yeah, give them any free um, I was free a sales air. agent for about two years. Then I, I took the broker's uh, exam and then uh, I decided I want to go on my own. And so this is where we are. That's, that was city. pretty That's fast. Like, yes. Three years. I came in kicking the doors in, man. <laughs> you were hungry, I ready. I was hungry. I was starving. I said, you know what? I got to do something else. And this is it. Okay. Tell me a little bit about your previous background. Were you in sales prior to? Kind of. I, I worked for the, uh, the hotel over there in JFK. And it's more like sales, you know, checking in the gas, uh, helping out, you know, people traveling from overseas. Mm -hmm. And so it's more like sales, you know. Okay. So that's the background. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So when you transitioned into dealing with real estate, you did have some prior experience, if we want to be technical about it, because you helped guests and, you know, to their accommodations and so mm -hmm. forth. So you already had that kind of swag that would allow people to feel comfortable Absolutely. with you. Absolutely. And I always uh, thought that uh, I always basically thought this is something that I want to be in. I was just not in the right place at the right time. Uh, but after the hotel went out of business in 2008, in 2008 um, I decided I wanted to change the page. And I could have went into the city and, you know, get the next job in the hotel. And I decided that, look, this is the time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make that move right now. Mm -hmm. And I've always studied real estate. I actually never uh, went to school and took the exam. I just actually just went, studied the books, and took the, the, uh, the state exam. And then I realized that I was doing it backward. <laughs> so I had to go back to school and, and, and do the, uh, the course. Okay. But, uh, that's how I got into it. And, and, you know, like I say, I enjoy it. I love it. I get up every day and I just want to do real estate. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Okay, yeah. my, my question to you, you said three years ago. Three years ago. Th that is shortly after the climate for real estate changed. How did you make exactly. it? Exactly. Uh, when I came into business, everybody was getting out of the business. So I, I thought it was an opportunity for me, you know, because um, I guess it's more, it's more real estate for me to sell if everybody's getting out the door. I didn't, I didn't saw it as a, as a negative. I saw it as a positive. Mm -hmm. And so I went in there. I just pretty much learned on my own. Uh, there was nobody there to really kind of guide me. Mm -hmm. And everything was just trial and error. I had some bad deals. But after getting over those, uh, you know, things started falling, falling together, falling in place. And like I say, uh, I decided that I wanted, really wanted to take it on my own. I'm always an entrepreneur. I've been in sales and business. I you know, have a business in the World Trade Center. Uh, just starting out, just doing a little stuff here and there. But always trying to be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. doing my own business and working for myself. Mm -hmm. And, I, I, you know, this is, this is right now on the ground stage. But I'm planning and getting it together and making it, making it some headways on it. Okay. Uh, the market is really soggy right now, but we're we're getting there and we're just kind of doing a lot of uh, rentals, and you know hopefully things turn around. But you know we're out there and we're trying to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What are, what's the ratio buyer to seller now? Is it well, a seller market or is it a buyer market? Actually, it's a it's a buyer's market. But the problem is that the inventory is very low right now. I don't know what's going on as far as sellers are not kind of, they're taking advantage of the, um, I would say, the, uh, the short sale market. A lot of them doing some short sales on the property or the refinance and modification and so forth. So they're doing that. Uh, Why are they doing short sales? Short sale is, is pretty much when a homeowner cannot afford to, uh, to keep the property anymore. And so that's an option. The government has um, certain options right now with the new law that allow them to sell a property short. They could even give the property back in what they call the deed in lieu of foreclosure. Mm. Or they could remodify the mortgage so they could uh, actually kind of tailor it to fit their budget. So this will save them from bad credit re on yeah, exactly. negative on their credit exactly. report. It saves them from some bad credit. Um, also, it does. Uh, affect the credit somewhat, but it doesn't damage it like a foreclosure would normally do. And so um, it does kind of restructure their finances if they let the property go. You know? 
It's a good mm. thing. Do they walk away with any profit or is it advantageous for someone to do a short sale if they find themselves in dire straits? Absolutely. I think that it's the best move to do a short sale if you figure that this house is going to take you down with it. You know, might as well you let it go, um, kind of restructure your finances and then, you know, after two years or so, the credit repairs itself, as long as you start paying the rest of the bills sometime and meeting all of those um, uh, obligations, you could actually go ahead and repurchase again after the, you know, the struggle. So it's a good thing. Let it go and, you know, foreclosure, you know, could stay in your credit for a mighty long time. Mm -hmm, in a mm -hmm. short sale, it actually forgive the debt and it actually kind of like take you out of that situation and, and, and you can do the restructuring. That's pretty much what it do. So it's very important to do whatever necessary to kind of save that credit. Home ownership now is more about um, living the American dream or investing? It's both. It's both. Uh, from my, from my um, advantage point, I, I think that it's, um, for some, it's an investing um, you know, thing right now they're doing. I've seen a lot of people from out of town, from Chicago, from you know, California, everywhere, calling here about property. So it is the um, uh, thing to do right now as far as investing. Now, as far as the American dream, I think it's, uh, it's still um, one of the things to do, to, to own a home in this country and to, you know, to live the American dream. Wow, well, but from my, I, I'm a tenant, right. still a tenant, right. but um, 30 years. But then when I look at it too, I, where, you know, I've been a tenant for that and longer, um, could have had my own home paid off by now, you know? So the mindset for tenant owner, you know, rent, renters and owners. Mm -hmm. What would what would you say to someone who's like me? I'm a ten, you know, as a tenant and looking for to buy their first time home. What should they What should they be engaging in? Um, I see people walk in the door here and and pretty much just came straight out and said, I don't want to own a home. <laughs> you know, it bugs me, but. Uh, uh, that's, you know, some, everybody is not the same, you know, some people just don't want that responsibility of owning a home, being responsible for the mortgage, the taxes, the water bill, and some people just rather just rent, stare, you know, just what, what they want to do. But I think owning a home is a really, really great thing, especially a family with kids and, you know, you have that peace of mind that this is your home, mm -hmm. you know, you're sticking the keys in your own door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is great. It is great. I think... It's a really good thing, you know. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I will wrap up and and allow you to tell the viewers where they can find your real estate office and um, also um, any email contact or anything that you would like to give. Um, you're free to do so. Well, yeah. Um, it's Chantier Real Estate at 219 Lewis Avenue. Brooklyn, New York, 11221, Bedford Stuyvesant. We're between Quincy Street and Lexington Avenue. And you can contact us at uh, C H A N T I O R, Chantior, R E, C H A N T I O R, R E, at gmail.com. Send everything there, and uh, you know we'll respond and we'll get back to you. All right, but this is a place to be, and we're gonna, we're gonna take this place like a, like a stall, pretty much. Awesome. I want to thank you as a neighborhood uh, business in my neighborhood, which is Bed-Stuy. Right. Um, we're going to do a pan out so people can actually see uh, the lovely office that you have. We'll right. get some front footage for you. Right. And we want to just welcome you because we know you're new to the business um, and also new to the community. And we right. thank you for helping us with our economics here. And thank you, Jasmine, for stopping by. Go ahead and take a look around. It's, it's very nice. We actually gut renovated the building. And it was old in the wall, but we did a great job here. You did a fantastic yeah. job. Eastern Regional Women of Concern Professional Strategic Conscious Network, and I know that's a mouthful, folks. But I'm here on a beautiful Sunday um, in the Highland community. Oh, yeah. right. 
just doing a host of things in this new production of WOCP TV. I hope you're going to stay tuned, plugged in, and remember it, folks, if you have a story that you want to share, something that you're doing in your community, send me an email at jwfarnum, that's J-W-F-A-R, in U-N-2005, at msn.com. Thank you.